Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Yesterday, I did a video in which I mentioned, you know, catastrophic failures in handguns and whether having a higher caliber in your handgun caused that to be more likely. And I said, no, it doesn't. But because I mentioned catastrophic failures in that video, a lot of people have been asking me, well, what are the more common reasons that a gun might fail, especially catastrophically? We're not talking about just not firing, like failure to feed or failure to eject. We're talking like just destroy itself, like self-disassemble. So today I thought I would put together a little video about this because believe it or not, a long time ago when I used to be on the gun forums, it had very little to do. I'd be sitting at work some days when it was very slow and I'd be on my computer. I would do research on things. And one of the things I did research was kabooms, as we like to call them in the gun world. What causes most of them? So I went through and I just basically started looking at every account I could find on the internet using my own personal information of things I've seen happen and things that have happened to me. And I kind of decided, you know, I'm gonna break them into categories and see which things I think are more common when it comes to the causes of kabooms. So today, I'm gonna to do a little list here of what I think are the five most common actual causes for guns to fail. Now, before I do the list, I wanna remind everyone, kabooms are very rare, and usually they're very avoidable. Now, I am gonna say one thing that I found to be a big category when uh, I was looking at kabooms on the internet was fakes. People would fake failures of guns. I've seen guns where, you know, the barrel of the rifle was peeled back like a banana and you could actually see where they had sawed little uh, cuts into the end of it to, so they could start pull, peeling it back. So fakes are common. Sometimes people fake it because they just want attention. Sometimes because they want to make a specific gun look bad. People faked polymer uh, handguns exploding because they didn't like polymer. So not going to deal with that category, but remember that that is something that happens. So pay attention when you see kabooms on the internet. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead here and get started with what I think are the top reasons for kabooms. And we're going to start off with the least common one. And when I say least common, it's very uncommon because like I said, kabooms are uncommon in general. But number five would be bad design. A manufacturer puts a gun out there that just isn't designed properly. Whatever they did to make it safe or to make it usable wasn't good. And that can become a problem. And that can cause catastrophic failure in a firearm. Now this doesn't happen hardly ever, because gun makers are so cautious about safety when they put guns out, but it has happened. You know, it's not unheard of, but like I said, very rare, but there's not a lot of common reasons for gun kabooms, so it still makes the list, and that is just a bad manufacturer's design. All right, at number four, we move on to something else from the manufacturer, and that is just manufacturing error. This is where a gun just isn't made right. Something gets through quality control that shouldn't get through. Maybe a barrel has some metallurgy issues or a slide, or maybe your frame wasn't cast properly or molded properly or whatever. And then you put heavy ammo in that gun and it should be able to handle that ammo, but because of that light flaw, it can't and it goes kaboom. Maybe the gun's not assembled properly. Maybe it's a revolver that the barrel's on wrong. And when you fire it, kaboom, or maybe the forcing cones off center or something. You know, it's just a gun that's been put together wrong, or one of the parts just wasn't up to snuff, and that's number four on the list. It's manufacturing error and flaws. All right, now we're to number three. Now, number three is a very broad category. It's basically the stupid human category. These are people who take guns that are obviously not in operating condition. Maybe they're old or they're abused and they use them anyway. They don't take the effort or the time to make them usable again before they do. Sometimes they just want to see if they'll explode. I've never thought that was very smart, but I see people do it all the time. They just take something, like I said, that isn't in operating conditions because it's been neglected or abused and they try to see what happens with it. Uh, that's just, a stupid human thing to do. 
Another stupid human thing to do to a lesser degree is modifying guns in ways that they were never meant to be modified. I don't mean uh, putting a different trigger in it or a different aftermarket barrel. I mean just taking a gun and like, let's cut this off and let's take this out and let's see what happens if we do this. Just really stupid things to do. It's like you're trying to make a gun explode, just like with the people who take guns that have been sorely abused and neglected and make them explode. So number three on the list is just stupid humans doing stupid things. All right, now we're to number two. And number two is a very specific thing that happens. You know, uh, stupid humans was very broad, but far more common than the first things I mentioned. This one is something that's common, but it's a specific thing. And it's something that can be avoided, but it's something you really don't blame people when it happens because a lot of people don't pay attention. And it is squib loads. If you don't know what a squib load is, it's when the gun uh, fires a round that doesn't have sufficient power to force it through the barrel. And the bullet becomes lodged in the barrel. Now it's very easy to miss this because the gun might still go bang. It just might not be as loud as it usually is and you might not notice it. And that bullet gets stuck in that barrel. Now that in itself will not damage the gun. You know, you just take yourself a dowel rod and a hammer and pound that round out. But if you pull the trigger again, that's when you can have problems. That can cause the gun to explode because the energy from that next round can't travel down the barrel. It has to go somewhere. So it comes back out the barrel. In revolvers, this often causes the barrels to explode. Also, it does that in semi-autos. Often it'll cause uh, catastrophic failure inside the frame, like shooting the magazine out, damaging the internals because that energy comes out the wrong direction. So that's something that happens quite a bit that actually causes the gun to be severely damaged. Uh, so that is number two on my list. It's something, like I said, that's very specific and kind of common. It's squib loads. All right, now we're to number one. Now, number one is also a very specific thing, and it is probably the most common thing I've ever seen when it comes to exploded handguns or kabooms. And I was going to put this under stupid humans when I first started doing my list, but it was so common and it wasn't always the person shooting's fault, so I didn't think it fit there. And it is overloaded ammo. Ammo that's just too powerful for the gun you're shooting. Now, often, I would say most often, this is because someone overloads a round. You see this with Rugers a lot. Almost every time you see an exploded Ruger revolver, it's because someone said, I found an old book that told me how to double load rounds and make them take down grizzly bears. Uh, and then they do it and then their gun explodes because either they don't do it right or they just take it to an extreme or the person who wrote it down didn't write it down right. It's just really trying to overload your gun. People that want the most powerful round they can possibly make, they want to push the limits of that gun and they push it too far. I've seen that often with reloaders, especially reloaders that want that powerful round, usually with Rugers. For some reason, people think Rugers are indestructible and they do this. But the only reason I didn't make this a stupid human thing is because sometimes it happens from ammo you buy, from a reloader, sometimes even a major factory a round can get double loaded and that can cause an issue. That wouldn't be your fault. Uh, that would just be bad luck. I mean, it's not often. In fact, getting a bad round like that from a manufacturer is super duper rare. But when we're talking about something that happens as infrequently as kabooms, it's something that you have to pay attention to. And in my experience and what I looked up on the web, my research, turns out, Kabooms were most often caused by overloaded ammo, whether intentionally or unintentionally. So there you have it. There's what I have seen with my own eyes and researched to be the most common reasons for kabooms in handguns. Have you had an experience that's different than one of these? If so, let me know in the comments section below. All right, everybody, that's it for me today. I hope everybody enjoyed the show and I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I want to remind everyone out there to always carry, as long as your gun is in shape to shoot and you aren't carrying overpowered ammunition in it, always carry and stay safe until I see you again. <laughs>